Let's talk about it all here on the Jordy Colada Show. Make sure and hit that like button, share button, comment button. You know, one thing about Jaden that I've tried to talk to him about is tightening his chin strap. Because he doesn't tighten it. So every time he gets hit, it looks like his helmet's all messed up. And it's like, oh, God, he just got rocked. For the win! After a fucking Saturday night in Tiger Stadium, <laughs> boys. Are you kidding me? What? Well, uh, LSU fan came stuck his spike in my booty. <laughs> that ball my heart. Oh, 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 oh. Fan brought his two grandkids by and literally was just 30 seconds. Just wanted to say thank you for the team and the season and what you did and, and how much it means to everybody here is, is truly what makes LSU special. Yeah. Kelly, we're official. Finally, I'm get telling. a chance to meet you. Thought I had to get a private audience with the Pope. There's just there's Jordy. Money through Friday from seven to nine. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordy Collider Show. And Come have a good time. Clearing up, answering the question. I thought, my God, if she gets offered this job, she's gonna take it. It's just a crazy, fun time at LSU right now. Isn't this what everybody loves? From the boot to the east to the west coast. No matter where we go. <laughs> Coach, it's great to meet you. Thanks, sir. Thank you for Thank the time. You. Friday edition of the Jordy Colada Show live here from our Click Here Digital Studios on this Friday morning. Getting you set. What looks like it's going to be a beautiful weekend, boys. Mm. Oh. After what was a uh, windy and nasty early part of the week. It seems like now it's nothing but 80 degrees and blue skies as the Masters now on here in the studio. And it looks like a It looks like a slice postcard. of heaven. Jesus. Good Lord. Look at this place. Maybe I was wrong. They can control Big Mother Nature. Next year. Next year. Put a bubble on it. Hell yeah. No, not yet. Not yet. I'll have a sign. The grass is really off. green. <laughs> you stepped on the premises. Get off the premises. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Colada. Why can't what a we, run. Why yeah, can't, what we, a run. Why can't we put this grass on football fields? Because we, what are we doing? They have and nobody touch. Uh, I guess nah, that's not true. Yeah, hey, people get well, on no, this they, thing. No, they, they they shut they, it down. They after play this. it six months a year. Three, maybe. Really? They shut it down uh, after this. No, I know they did. Yeah, we'll it play. goes from. But I mean, there's a membership to it. Yeah, I mean, Warren Buffett's a member. I don't think he's out there stomping around. I think Pat Pete's a member. Oh, uh, that would be elite. Yeah. There's 300 members now. It used to be much more exclusive, but. I mean, people want to play it. People want to be a member, and you can only play it like, like you said, four months out the year. Football they rip, season's only what six months. Yeah, they rip it up every after this. They make another change, but they have air conditioners. I think football season's actually the the season. 
Yeah, where they shut it down. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah, nobody's playing football right. there. Nobody's playing golf during football season right. on a Saturday. But uh, they have air conditioners underneath the greens. Hell yeah. Oh, and damn. in the fairways. I mean, like, this they, is like the super rich. See, if I was like... like this the elite. Like, yeah, this but if I was like an owner or something, I'd be percent. studying this grass. Like, I'd be trying to replicate this, this beauty. I do. <laughs> what does Snoop say? I don't know golf, but I do know grass. Right. Exactly. <laughs> no, this place is perfect. It's one of one. They put so much money into it. There was a, uh, a story I heard yesterday that... They used to have a secondary market, like a stub hub next to Augusta, like this little <laughs> shop that uh, you shack. could get, yeah, like secondary market tickets. Augusta got one of it and bought the whole Publix, Hell like bought yeah. the entire parking lot. It was like, we're not dealing with that anymore. Yeah, yeah. So that's the but kind of money that gets you good green grass. There was one year where um, a women's advocate group threatened to like go at all their advertisers or, or something. And they were like, okay, well, we'll just, we'll go commercial free. Yeah. On the weekend. That's what because their their biggest sponsor or partnership is IBM, and there was a year where yeah they tried to boycott Augusta because there's no female members. Right. And Augusta said, okay, if nobody wants to tell about it, we'll do it ourselves. <laughs> right. And they put it on commercial free for four days. And, <laughs> and I mean wow. they're just like you I mean, can't they're literally untouchable. The ultimate flex. Yeah. yeah. Right. Big what golf. Else you, what else you got? Yeah. They're. You thought football was big. <laughs> yeah, it, right. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my you golf. Thought Goodell <laughs> <started It's>, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you thought Goodell swung a big stick. <laughs> yeah. Come meet the, come meet Mr. Payne. Look at my driver. Right. Right. Come see this stick. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, it's unbelievable. Mm. What number is that? Thirteen. That's, see, that's what I'm 17, saying. Seventeen. We need this grass on football fields. I don't know. What Tiger else. looked great yesterday. Just bogeyed. Uh, we were talking internally. I don't know if you've seen it. Well, uh, Stewie, can you flash this on the screen? I'm a fan of Tiger's new logo. Oh. Find it. Lloyd, who's the, the resident golfer here on the it, show. It's growing on me. It's growing on me. It seems like before it came out, there were so many possibilities of what he could have done. And I he thought ought, he was going to go like Ken Griffey, like the, that's what, but, but the, the, the swing, the fist. Uh, yes. So okay. I thought it was going to be pump. something like that, like more, I guess, either. I thought it was going to do like fangs, like tiger fangs with like the Ooh. TW, something like that. And he already had like the TW one trademarked, and he thought he would use that. But he went his totally own direction. Yeah. It's something that looks good on him. Does he still own the Tiger Woods logo from Nike? That's what I've heard. I think I think he yeah, I think he like But he wanted to bury it. In yeah, the that was yeah. the deal. Nike gave it to him in a sense. Cuz some people still wear like That's the, the old do. Nike golf shoes that had yeah. the TW on the bottom and then they took a, they took that away. They're out of production. And you would think like why would Nike not give him that? Or why would like you know, like why would Nike mess that relationship up given that Tiger Woods is their biggest golf no, I understand. Probably I mean, ever. I, I totally understand that, but at the end of it, I mean, it's still it's, business. Yeah, it is, but... It's Tiger Woods and Michael it, Jordan. Right, it's Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan. It's two people you don't want to piss yeah. off yeah. in that type of... Right. In that world. Um, well, I mean, you saw they, they kind of bent the knee to LeBron, too. I mean, right. they gave him a billion-dollar lifetime contract. Yeah. And KD. Did they? Yeah, I think Did Kevin Durant just got a lifetime, too. Yeah, I'd imagine he and Nike are still in somewhat good standing because Phil Knight was one of, like, 15 people at Tiger's dad's funeral. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, I don't so, think that goes away just because of business. Yeah, there's the logo. It looks a little bit like the um, Slozinger logo. It does. Which is, you know, not yeah. the upper Tiger-esque. echelon of, yeah, exactly. But it's growing on me. I think it looks good on him. Like I said, I don't know if you'll see, if I see somebody at the local Muni on a Sunday with the yeah. Sunday red on, I think you're probably going to get laughed at. I agree. I but agree. the pants look good. I, I know what you mean. Yeah. You, mean. <laughs> like you, you, you better mean. stripe it, guys. Tiger's kind of ripped, though. I, I, I am on. Yeah, he looks great. Jeez. Oh, I mean, for a guy that's like 60% titanium now. He might be 100% he titanium. Looks, I, he looks like the Tin Man when he walks. Yeah. I mean, there are some shots of him where they catch him walking, and he looks a very little, robot. I mean, little, like, I know that he was. But, I mean, <laughs> like, you can tell he's, like, tough to, like, turn yeah. like now and i mean Damn. in his prime people i, I mean i was I, i've talked to my son about this there were times in the fairway where he looked like a strong safety oh. walking up to his second shot or he'd be coming towards the green where they'd catch him walking over a hill or like a a back shot of him where Ooh. he's like looking down mm -hmm. got me got me <laughs> <laughs> but like you know like like they'll like stand behind the golfer and they're like looking at the green and it would be like almost you know like a perfect silhouette of a man I love him i mean you were that you would be like there were a, a, a 5 6 year stretch where you were like good lord god
And I mean, this guy looks like he plays for the Steelers. <laughs> the funny thing about it is him looking the way and being that. Obviously, he was like much. He was much more slender when he came in, and then like, but mm-hmm. became obsessed with yeah, like I'd working love to see out. The time oh, the, transformation. Yeah, and it's you go to about from ninety seven to two thousand. He's not like jacked, and then two thousand three to Woo! now. He, he is, had to be on some shit. He's still on it. Like yeah. what do they? They don't test for PEDs in the golf world. He, I mean, if you would have tried steroids, try but I steroids. Mean, like, Tiger Woods has got to be on like some. Oh, he's doing like some like the good stuff. Whatever well, LeBron's mean, doing. HGH. Like yeah. they're giving like. I saw some speed horses. I did see some some smoke about LeBron being on some type of Cause. PEDs. I mean, look. I, I mean, if I, you I, can I'm afford not mad, it, I'm not do mad it. at him if he is. Right. He plays till you're forty. You got to be on something. Forty to jumping me. and running like that. I'm just saying, like with I, with no major injury. He also spends over a million bucks on his body per right. year, so. right? Like I mean, so he understands what the investment in himself stands for. But he drinks I mean, so much wine too. I mean, look, I'm just a big wine guy. I'm skeptical by nature on a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm skeptical he, skeptical with Tom Brady too. Like yeah, I mean, how do you oh, play sure. that long? Absolutely. Like he only had w- uh, another one, well, one just, major injury. You're not supposed to age like that. Right. You know what I mean? Like looks, I, he I almost even, looks better. I can even give you somebody like The Rock. Oh, what do you? I mean, he's a wrestler. You know, but I mean, I agree. But I mean, what's <laughs> it like? What is he on? I'm saying like <laughs> I want some. Sure, I would love some, but I'd love for all the athletes to be on it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'd still love to be watching Cam Newton play. Yes. Yes. Cam Newton went on Club Shay Shay. Talked Absolutely. about the Florida stuff. Yeah, talked about a I mean, lot of I, stuff. But I mean, I'd love for him to still be around in the league. Yeah, for sure. And I'd imagine that HGH could probably keep him around. And that well, that you, there's a perfect sport coming up for you the the steroid Olympics, where yeah. everybody is openly on on the on when the is shit. That? When is it? Yeah, I don't know because I'm all in on you, that. What the Olympics? The, the steroid, steroid Olympics. Olympics. Oh wow, when is this? Wow, I never heard of this. Tiger looks 2025. Great. Oh, they got to. They go, don't have a date yet. They got to go a year after the real Olympics. Yeah, and we'll do this every. Whatever, however your cycle lines up. The, I mean, the real Olympics is that, every four he looks years. fantastic. Oh, yeah. I mean, the thing is, you can't really, I guess you can't have any empathy or sympathy for the man because it's all self. He did this to himself. Sure, absolutely. Which I think is all the more, he's, that's the golfer every man. Right. Like, everything aside from that, he is not golf. But because when he showed up, like I was saying, he showed up ripped. In the like early two thousands, everybody's like, "Look at who you're playing against, John Daly, <laughs> David Tom." Yeah, these guys, he's five six, one hundred and thirty pounds. Like, I want to be a professional. This is the only sport I have. Phil Mickelson, you can't come in here six two, one hundred ninety five pounds. Nobody's working out. It looks like LaRon Landry. Yeah, they're smoking <laughs> cigarettes in the fairway. Like, what a couple pops after this. He when, did make it like. Oh, no, this know, is what all these guys are playing. Activity, yeah, yeah. That's but this this is the generation of golf you're seeing now, which is. Obviously, the live and whatever stuff, but that's why you have such a youth movement in golf. Is every they all are my age and younger? That what the hell is Jason Day wearing? Oh, uh, that's the marble, the marble man. That's another new golf brand. You didn't see his pants yesterday? They look like no, the Malbon is uh, the, is the yeah. brand, but he does look like the marble man. But this is like yeah, the new trendy. Like cigarette. This is like what the kids wear. This is what they're going for. It's oh, like wow. the young man's like. 80s trying to you know that old swag yeah, right he was wearing the the parachute pants yesterday and they were whipping in the wind it looked like he could have taken off wind golf is the, the most worst. miserable golf the windy worst. cold i'm going in after the first hole yeah you got to really love it or be really to. good absolutely or be playing for something no you really have to love golf to play it in the wind and the rain you know it's like hunting in the rain oh like, uh, what, are, what are we doing four in the morning i'm out of here where do you <laughs> where do you think the ducks are <laughs> i mean i'm Probably not, sleeping, I'm not cause. Yeah. At anything this month you can't travel in this weather uh <laughs> brian <laughs> kelly was speaking <laughs> <laughs> brian kelly was speaking with the media yesterday uh we will let you hear from that it's a good friday morning here to you uh, as daily, we were brought to you by RMB Builders. Remember, Rhett Bourgeois and the crew, rmb-builders.com. And on Instagram at RMB Builders. And daily, our phone lines brought to you by Southern. Look at Ty. Just out from Jason Day. Uh, daily, we're brought to you by <laughs> Southern Regional Medical old. Center. As our friend, Southern Regional Medical Center, Jason Ramazan, uh, Charlie Harvey, the entire crew over there. Remember, Ramo and Mr. Funge travel. They're putting together the LSU-USC trip to Vegas. They've already started taking requests and started to Book trips there, so jump online to MrFunsTravel.com. 
Uh, we will talk. Shay said he's going to come by 8 a.m. Shay did? In? Uh, no, he said Colin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's okay. Uh, I can't, if it would shoot for the moon, you land amongst the stars. Uh, huge news yesterday. O.J. Simpson dead at 76. I, I swear, I feel like I was, I saw this real time. I was sitting at my desk kind of in between tasks. I and I was I just kind of, so Twitter. I'm kind of like, sir, like I'm kind of like have Twitter open. And I've got like, you know, like my, my work, e I bounce, like am bouncing back in between work email and Twitter. And I go to Twitter and like the first post, like zero seconds, boom. OJ like Simpson. Orenthal James Simpson. Simpson. It's like OJ Simpson, the real OJ. And I swear I thought out loud that OJ's dad was still alive. Same. I really thought, I, I like, was like, I was like doing the math and I was thinking like, no way they're talking about OJ. I was like, like every time I see this guy, he looks so he looks right. He just so did vibrant. A, he just did a um. He does Cam and Cameron, Cameron and Mace do a podcast now, right. and he does like hits on their podcast. Sometimes he did a hit like three weeks ago, and he looked. He always he had just a, looked like old OJ. I mean, there is something too. I guess if you got away with what he did, how would you not be happy all of the time? Yeah, like every time, every day you live is on borrowed time. I should have been in jail for life. Right. I would walk around with a smile on my face too. He got out of the jail and like immediately got on Twitter and started the yeah. juice. I'm back. I mean, <laughs> like, fell in love with football again. Started breaking down <laughs> Buffalo Bills games, that was, <laughs> giving his picks. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah. Do you remember hey, Twitter World? <laughs> yeah, he went live. It's yours truly. <laughs> Or the juice. No, the juice. <laughs> the juice. He, he went live on Twitter oh for his God. fantasy football draft. No doubt. And he took Andrew Luck with the first pick and Andrew Luck retired. <laughs> like two days later. <laughs> He's like, well, well I guess my league's it's over. Great Twitter. We gotta redraft. His his Twitter content. Oh, it was unreal. Elite. It was like, unreal. The man knew how to Twitter. It was unreal. He was just a absolute <laughs> entertainer before there was one, yeah. right? Like he would be the first, I would say, icon. Like in terms of blending sports and he's, commercials and movies, he's and the just, first of a lot. You know, like I mean, OJ is a. I'm telling you, he's he's a human experiment. An yeah. icon. <laughs> when it all when it is all said and done, OJ and Magic I mean, should be studied by the things that they did in LA. One hundred percent. That's I two mean, people that should be at the time <laughs> that Magic Johnson and and OJ were running. California. LA. Oh God! It was. I mean, a <laughs> place was, uh, it was too much of a dangerous. Good time. Yeah, yeah, dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous. I if mean, you, just, it, you either end up with AIDS or in jail. Yeah. Just, just think about being at a party and like OJ shows up. You're like, damn, I might have to leave. Yeah, I mean, magic, magic shows, shows up. It's like, all right, I'm boys, let's out here, get man. out of here. Because uh, where's my wife? <laughs> <Yeah>, right, <laughs> right. Ma Magic, the silent killer. I mean, Mike Tyson and Eddie Murphy <laughs> hiding from him in the corner. Jeez. Yeah. You know. I mean, just the. I, I would advise anyone who has never seen Ezra Edelman's OJ Made in America documentary. Oh yes. To first off, if you're a documentary fan, it is by far the best documentary I have ever seen, bar none. And I am a documentary junkie is that the 30 for 30 yeah the three uh, the three episode the four part series yeah, it's yeah. The 30 for 30 yeah. yeah it's a 30 for 30 i think that's originally where it 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 it, it manifested he came uh it came out um where it came out but yes um anyone who has never seen that or even i you know what i i watched it again last summer after watching it i mean i just kind of was thinking about it and watched it again watched all four parts again and it's as powerful the you know the, the 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 second time as it was the first time it is an unbelievable piece of um, documentary i mean it's an incredible look back at not only you know the the case of the century with oj simpson but just how oj was made i mean really how he came about how his popularity soared in times that were very difficult for you know, African American men to to or you know anyone of uh, of of race to experience any type of success, and those that did usually kind of galvanized. Like people of the time were Muhammad Ali and Kareem Abdul Jabbar and Jim Brown were very outspoken and advocates for civil rights at the time, and OJ was 
you know, somebody that, that stayed away from that and the, the, the discussion and detail on why and how and uh, the recourse of that is, it's fascinating. It's, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's educational. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a deep dive into not only, you know, OJ, but real American history. I mean, really and truly. I mean, it's an incredible, incredible piece of content that, that, that Edelman put together. And I don't think people realize how good OJ was at football. No. Like the football player OJ. No, I mean. <laughs> like that gets like overshadowed by everything that he did. 100%. the football player is, I mean, like the, the, the Dave Chappelle story have you ever heard dave dave chappelle's skits <laughs> oh, of OJ, oh yeah where but he talks like, about the four times he met oj yeah, and, he's like, and he's like she his and, wife comes up to him and he's like yeah and, and, and they're like, like are you at a again? business party yeah they're like at a business party like oj had just gotten out you know like like they had just gotten off the case and this is like he's like the second time i met oj because like the first time he was he was with nicole and they were at a show and they came up to him after the show and like or me, you know, and he was like just star studded. He was like, "Oh my oh god, god, this is yeah. OJ. He wants to meet me." The second time, like OJ had like just gotten off the case, you know, like and just beat it. And you know, again, and I want to make sure respect to, um, you know, Nicole is, is family and Ron Goldman's family, uh, Nicole Simpson's family, because you know, I mean, even on, yesterday, I mean, still uh, the brutal, uh, you know, the brutality of that and. You know, I know a, a lot of attention goes on OJ, but you know, obviously, that, it's still probably a, a, a horrific day for for those families. Um, but you know, Dave Chappelle, if you've not seen Dave Chappelle tell the oh, the goodness. four the four times Hilarious. that he runs into OJ, like as a part of his skit, it is. I mean, it, it is so funny. And the second time he talks about, like, OJ just got out of the case. So, like, people are kind of like, eh. You know, yeah, a like, little frigid around <laughs> it. Yeah, kind of like, like move it. Yeah, yeah, there's a, you know, like, so, like, it's, it's him, his agent, his wife. And they're, like, celebrating a deal that Chappelle had just struck. Like, his, his career is kind of, like, starting to take off, right? And so, like... OJ wants to meet you again. Yeah, they're, like, OJ just kind of, like, pops into this back. You're, like, we're kind of in this secluded area. Like, we're all eating and celebrating, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, OJ comes back and, like, the record stops. You know, like, people are kind of, like... Like, quick, some quick, of the men quick. are kind of, like... What up, Juice? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> deep, brother. Yeah, right. Juice is loose. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. And some people are, you know, like uh, like a lot of the ladies are like, silverware. Let's get the hell out of here, yeah. you know. And Dave Chappelle's like, "What up, Juice?" Yeah, you know, like <laughs> shakes his hand, and like his wife's like, "How could you? How, how could you do that after what he's done to women?" And he goes, uh, "That guy ran for eleven thousand yards, Susan." <laughs> 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 I mean, like that was a hell of a football like, player. You can't take back the eleven yeah, thousand I mean, like, yards. The guy was an incredible. Won football my fantasy player. league for me <laughs> in ninety three. <laughs> for eleven thousand, people forget. I mean, like, like the man he was a football player, <laughs> right? And then like he's like he's under under his breath. He's like, and he was acquitted. So I mean, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, acquitted so much so that do you see the Heisman put out a statement for him? Like, somebody quote to was like, give Reggie his Heisman like, back. Like, Reggie can't get yeah. his Heisman back. But, yeah. I mean, O.J. Simpson, a Heisman winner. Like, people don't know these things about him. Like, First I mean, ever to run for over 2,000 yards in a 14-game game season. season. I mean, 14 games. And, Coach, the highlights are and sick. everybody in the building knew where it was going. The juice. Like, I mean. The juice was loose in Buffalo. It was loose all across <laughs> the highway. It was he was everywhere. everywhere. He I was mean, everywhere. The, the memes yesterday. Were oh, everywhere. my goodness. Did you see the Bronco hearse? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Somebody said. Going down, going down the LA Expressway <laughs> with all the cops behind you. Somebody was like, Ford has the best opportunity, opportunity ever. To do really the funniest do. thing. Like, I mean, they should. And they have a new Bronco out, which yeah. is the, like which makes it even better. Juice. The juice is loose. Rest in peace. My stepdad at the time had a white Bronco. Wow. Be not because of like the juice. Um because at the time they were like the that, that was the hit it, car. That was it. Cool. I mean, that was that, the whip. That was it. 
Who was OJ's this buddy? This guy just threw his ball in the... In the oh, Tyrell Hatton's an absolute head oh. case, dude. He is insane. He's probably the funniest golf what is OJ? tour. His, you're talking about his friend who had... Al Callings? Say, yeah. AC. Yeah. AC? <laughs> Have you ever seen OJ versus uh, yes. well, FX? Which is... It's a great series. It's it's great. I David mean, Schwimmer like, I mean, that. I know Cuba Gooding's all up in the, in the <laughs> Diddy stuff, but like he's, he's fantastic in it. He plays... He plays OJ and he. he oh, plays are you it. talking about the OJ TV versus? Show? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that is that's like, actually a really good piece of TV. It really is. Like, I mean, it, it really is because well, the story is fascinating. This, you could tell it a million different times, and people would watch every single time. It is, but like the prosecutor's office, they're all like. When, the, when he's on TV, they're like, how'd he get his car back? Yeah. <laughs> like, the juice. Like, no, it's his best friend. He's got one just like it. They're like, yeah. you're kidding, right? No. no. <laughs> like, no, man. They, the guy worships him. He did. They, like, who else would drive in the car? I mean, he's like, all right. I'm... Do you have that friend? What? Like, do you have that friend? That if, would do if, that if you're, for like, you? I mean, like the whole and world I... thinks you've murdered your wife and someone else that you're like, hey, man. I need you to drive me anywhere. Anywhere. Ooh. Like, do you, like, who picks up? I don't know if I had the person in my life that would be like, bro, I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing that. Are you, are you nuts? Yeah, I think. My- you're all over, you're all over, <laughs> you're all over television. I think you'd have to get into a spot where you're like, this isn't a good idea. You would hopefully talk him off the, the proverbial the ledge. ledge. Yeah, I think AC but was just like, to have AC a, was in on every. AC thing. was like, fuck like, it. That's what I'm saying. Let's AC do was it. in on every. I mean, to like, your point, what the, a guy. Like, That's your we, boy. we are ride or die, literally. I mean, on the OJ Made America documentary, one of the boys, like one of his like inner circle dudes from like back home, is like he's been that for OJ his whole life since they were. Kids. They said like somebody pulled a gun on OJ on the football field like during like, school, and, and an AC jumped in front of the barrel and was like, "If you're gonna kill him, you got to kill me first. Jeez, coach, it's seventeen. I mean, like. Yeah, well, be, who who does that? That's more plausible than, hey, hop, drive hop me in the whip. Yeah, right. Cro- he probably offers like juice. I'll drive. Yeah, get in. This is what I do. Well, I mean, by that point, it sounds like Juice was probably like AC, pick me up. Yeah, I don't know. I'm in a bad spot, but that yeah, like to your like to your point, like that's an incredible friend to be like. I know everything. I'll still get in the car. Like, <laughs> AC, yeah. you're going down with me now. Right. Like, like, I mean, you're a accomplice. Cool. Yeah. What do you think AC stands for? <laughs> Wild man, wild. It is My guy wild. AC man. I guess that's the thumbnail today. OJ, OJ, OJ and the Bronco. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, Damn. he was incredible in the Naked Gun movies too. If that's you've what I'm ever saying. He crossed that, over. He was one of the first to cross over. Where you were like, he's actually a pretty good actor. Like, I'm telling cross you, cross over to media and everything, mm-hmm. like football I mean, player to they, media person. They have some of these like rich white guys on this documentary, like guys that wear like what do they call those things, like ash. Ash coughs or whatever. There's things around their neck. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like rich, like they yeah. walk in the room. You're like, this guy's rich. Yeah, he's rich. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but he has the thing on. Like, he's like telling a story in the documentary. Like they were like talking Ask about. Off. They were talking about like at the time. <laughs> this guy's like a part of the Beverly Hills Country Club. Yeah. Which not only were there no black members at the time, like. There were no discussion yeah. of black people this coming is, out. This was there. the elite of the elite. Like, I mean, they looked and at. And you stay over there. And this guy was like, OJ was so trans. He was so transformative. Like at the time, like even the bigots and the racists loved OJ. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you had a section of the country club that were like, those guys tell nothing but race jokes. They hate everything that's not white. They're made from a time that just. You'll never be able to, to learn code. them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they're just idiotic, unintelligent Neanderthals. Bigots. Right? But when OJ walks in the room, they all sit up straight. You know, it's like... That's OJ. He, yes, like, there's the juice. Yeah. I mean, like... <laughs> Over here! He was someone at the time that... And I think that's what, like, pissed Ali... Jim Brown. And this was like around like the Rodney King time. Kareem like, Abdul Jabbar. This, was, this like, was that's wild what pissed time all in those LA. people off. Because he could have been such an advocate. He was so powerful. Yeah. And you he know, they were like, dude, you swing a, a enormously bigger voice than we do. And he thought that was why. Yeah. You know, he was like, Yeah, the reason why I get these roles, the reason why I'm allowed in these country clubs, the reason why I'm allowed to do these commercials is because they don't consider me the you know, to be some type of threat to them or the establishment, right? 
and that was always kind of the yep the 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 bang back and forth it's an incredible documentary mm -hmm. i mean I, I would advise anyone who has not seen it yeah. or if you have seen it you're looking just for you know some some days to kill um <laughs> yeah they, there's a clip on intended i caught a clip <laughs> i caught a clip from that this morning on twitter and it, uh it was a guy talking about how oj was with some other black people and somebody made a comment about him being with those other black people and he was like oh i'm just oj like, yeah. yeah like i'm not black i'm oj right like that and that was where the famous and, quote and, came and, from and like that was society had built him to that untouchable place right really i mean they had put him almost in a category of his own i mean when he was on top of the world he was he was as untouchable as anyone out there is that tiger yeah oh. i almost chipped in for birdie but I mean, to keep the conversation going, he's done the Tiger has done the same thing. Yes, <laughs> among, among scandal, he mm. he would he, in a largely in a game dominated by Caucasians. Tiger was the first one to kick the door down, and then he became universally loved. Where it's not black white, it's Tiger. Yeah, and that they tried to make him early in his career like a yeah more of an advocate for like the African American community, and he was like, I just want to play golf. And then, like, I'm going to let the rest of it take care of itself. And he was always so sheltered and just made into this perfect athlete by his father from a mentality and physical standpoint that it became impossible to ignore. And It then, was. And then the way, like, I can, I'm going to be so good at this that it doesn't matter what color I am. And then you see he transformed to golf. There's always the conversation of who's the best golfer of all time. He's the most impactful and most important and the best golfer of all time. Oh, without question. I mean, you could argue now, I mean, he's a, a most impactful athlete of all time yeah. for yeah. what he's done to that sport. But at the time that OJ was doing that to football, he was doing what Tiger Woods is doing to golf. I mean, right. people were looking at his talent like, this is, um, I, we've never seen this. Yeah. I mean, he was... I saw it described yesterday, and it was perfectly said. I mean, OJ played with a quarterback at Buffalo who had a 38% completion percentage. <sighs> Coach, they might, they might as well just taken the banker out of the, 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 the toll line yeah. and put a, a helmet on him and, said, throw and it. said, hey, man, go play quarterback for the Bills. You can keep the jersey. You know, but like every single play, we're just going to give it to this guy. Can you take two steps behind you and turn to your or can right? Can you just toss it to this yeah. cat? Yeah. You complete a two-yard pass? I mean, everybody in the building knew where it was going, and he was running for 2,000 yards. I mean, he was – his college highlights are silly. Oh, yeah. I mean, like they're like stupid. I mean, in the 20 – like in 2010, they, they ranked him number 40 out of the top 100 greatest players in the NFL. Oh, I mean. So it's like – His highlights still play. Yeah. You know what I mean, well, like his 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 highlights I still mean, you turn the, them on, you're like Talk Man, about this the guy. juice is loose. Ooh. And Louisiana ties. Yeah. Oh. Boot boy. I, all, I posted the picture yesterday. Louisiana. I met him in Las Vegas. He was just playing a little ho hum round of golf of eighteen by himself. And then we start obviously we're like, That's O. J. Simpson. And I was like, Get the fuck out of town. No, it's not. Like I would just head down the and they're like, no, that's OJ. I that's look up and like, he's gargantuan, first oh, of all. I and bet. he's still, that's what I'm saying. It's kind of hard to believe that he's that he passed because of the way that he looked. You're like, still looks great. And we obviously are like, can we talk to him? And I started like, yeah, he comes here all the time. He obviously loves attention. <laughs> and we go up there, <laughs> so and there's probably a group of eight of us. And he starts holding court, like, on the first tee box, like, talking, like, where y'all from? Like, Louisiana's like, oh, I got friends and family from Natchez. Where y'all from? Like, Alexandra's like, oh, yeah, you got to go around the circle. And I was like, <laughs> How do you know that? Like I could be, like he's like I can convince twelve <laughs> I can convince twelve people more than once in my life. <laughs> but, Hell of a slice. Yeah, he could play today. Like if you know his game was before, I mean, ahead of his he, time. He looks big. Look how big he is there. Oof. Wife and kids. Got to go fix the. Got to run the mail tomorrow. Yeah, this is USC against UCLA. When it was big time. Oh. I mean, look, he's just this is back like Reggie. Mm. The juice. With that, uh, is it Barbara Walters? Where they do the interview and he does like the behind the scenes oh, where no. she not. <laughs> is, is, that un, is that unreal? That's unreal. That's unreal. That's, how, That's I, unreal. I don't know if he would like, I guess it's ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Where you're just like, oh, I'll do this. Like he does a scene. Oh, he does a skit. Yeah, that. with a knife. And then she's just like, she's mortified. She is. And they're like, oh my God. She is. And I mean, because she, she's a great 
interview. It's not Barbara Walters. It's um, golly man, I want to make sure and get her name right because she's fantastic. Um, but there have been a couple of moments since the you know obviously um, since the decision where you know you're like I mean he wrote the Ruby book. Wax. Ruby Wax, that's exactly right. And she had this exclusive sit down, and, but it was like fresh, like it was like at the time everybody wanted to. He still lived like in the. He still lived like on Bundy, or was it? Uh, was his house on Bundy, or was the murder oh, scene on know. Bundy? I don't know. He still lived in his house, you know, like the one like, like, and they were like driving, and people were harassing him, and they were walking on Venice Beach, and. Like somebody walked up to him and was like, "Murderer, yeah, you're a murderer." Or can I have your autograph? I want to know what it's like to, you know, like yeah. have an autograph from a murderer. And she's like, "How does this affect you?" But after the interview, she's like telling the story. She's like, "OJ wanted to play a trick on me, like wanted to like play a practical joke, joke. on me." And she's like, sets it up, and she's like, "And this is what it was." <laughs> and she opens the door. And OJ is like standing at the door and is faking like. A, does he have a knife? It's yeah, a knife. Is like it a, a knife or a? He's got something in his hand and he is like acting like he is like stabbing down uh -huh, and on her. Laughing. And he's got this huge grin on his face. Yeah, where he thinks it's funny. And she's just like. This and is your that's, And that's how the interview ends. ends. Like. <laughs> He's you want just, this on camera? Yeah, like you want to do yeah, this? Yeah, it's funny. That, that's it. He's always an entertainer. Like that's where he blurred the lines between of what he what he probably was like. I don't know if he's actually a person. Right. You know, where it's like he right. was so, I guess, cold and callous inside of his own brain where he's like, I'm playing a character of this jovial guy where nothing ever bad happens to me. Right. Like Everybody I can get away with me. anything. Yeah, I'm OJ. Right. He... And, he he at that time that he was being interviewed by Wax, he, you could tell he was going through that period of. What do you mean people don't like me? Yeah, like wait, they don't want me here, right? You know, like you don't want me at your restaurant. Yeah, you used you know, to like you used to like beg me, make a table for me. Right, I'd walk in anywhere. Yeah, it was it, it, one it of was the a, most interesting lives that and then of he wrote modern the book. America. <laughs> he yeah, wrote the book. If I did it, if I did it, and the if is this big in it. <laughs> That's because, you know... Yeah, they lost the civil suit. They, they lost the civil suit, and the Goldmans got the the rights to it, so they just shrunk the if, if. <laughs> on, the, on the book. But, I mean... As polarizing a figure as maybe yes. ever we've seen in, like, I guess you could say, like, modern America, where it's, like, yeah. television, everything that can be... I mean, imagine if you had Twitter when this happened. Oh, my, oh my goodness. God. Well, I mean, you know, Court TV was kind of... That was that what was the first it? case that was really televised, televised, nationally. aired every single day. Brought you in the courtroom. I mean, I still recall sitting in my high school freshman civics class with Chris Carrier, Coach Carrier, who was the coach, and like he did like the deal, like he wheeled in the TV. Wow! And we watched, we watched it live in our civics classroom at catholic high school with chris carrier coach carrier as the coach i mean i remember it vividly to this day and like just i you you heard you could hear it almost o over the entire campus when the announcement was made like just the there was such a reaction to it there was such a, a you know like an outward reaction by everyone i mean there's great scenes from across america at that time when that thing was announced. Oh, I mean, didn't they, they tape delayed the, or no, they cut into the NBA finals, didn't they? Mm -hmm. That was on the chase. Yeah, that the was chase, the chase. The chase cut off the game of the, the NBA chase finals. Cut, like cut off the finals. That but, was, um, that was, was the Rockets. That was the Jordanless Bulls versus the Knicks. Mm. No, 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 no. It was the Rockets and the Knicks. Yeah. It was the Rockets and the Knicks. But right. that, that I've heard stories, obviously, from my parents. Whatever this happened, it was it captivated America. Like, oh, the, like it, they did it, the exact same thing. Like it was appointment television. OJ was he was arguably the most popular figure in the in the in the country. Yeah, at the time. I mean, if he if he wasn't one, he wasn't ten. Yeah, he, you know what I mean. He was he was up there. One, uh, two, and ten. Jason Day just put it in the water on sixteen. Uh, all right. So remember daily. We're brought to you by Go Roof Online. G E A U X Roof dot com. Go Roof. 
uh, 927-8300, 225-927-8300 is the phone number. Residential or commercial roofing services. Uh, whatever you may be looking for, Go Roof can help you out today. Online, G-E-A-U-X, roof.com, G-E-A-U-X, roof.com. All right, Brian Kelly was speaking with the media yesterday as Tiger Woods uh, puts it on the green rolling here. Uh, this Funneling. is where Tiger made the famous chip, um, right? Yeah, it was a 16? Yeah, it was 16. Yeah. He was, um, which he put it in a terrible spot on 16 whenever that like that shot should have been impossible especially on that day everybody like puts it to like three it was feet Sunday. yeah they put a pin right it's like a, a shot that you almost like guarantees a birdie to keep it you know so you want to see this like the leaderboard move and obviously it's safe there but on Sunday they put it in a spot where it's like this is going to be so you're, you're betting like hole in one and so for him to be able to get up in two on mm. that shot was unbelievable Vern in the booth in your life. Um, all right, Brian <laughs> Kelly yesterday was speaking with the media, wrapped up the final on-field practice before LSU moves it into Tiger Stadium for the spring game coming up on Saturday. Uh, Kelly had some statements before he was wrapping up his press time. Here he is, too. Let's just run these down. This is one of Kelly uh, speaking about what they got out of the last 14 practices. Well, we just wrapped up our 14th uh, practice out of 15, and yeah, why don't we close that? Great. Uh, 14th out of 15th practice, and so, you know, from, from, from a perspective of, you know, did you, did you achieve the things that you want to achieve? Did you make the progress that you want to make? Um, you know, certainly um, we have a better sense of the areas that we need to get better in. Um, certainly um, players that we're counting on uh, to play more prominent roles um, from last year. Um, I, I think we walk away with, um, you know, clearly a better feel for uh, our football team. and the areas that we have to really strengthen going into um, the off season. So, um, you know, what does that mean particularly? Um, I think we all uh, clearly understand that um, the team itself um, is, is better uh, balanced offensively and defensively. Um, I think last year it was pretty clear that you know, we were trying to fit in a lot of transfers uh, out of the portal on defense. There's, there's a lot more continuity on defense, and and certainly from an offensive perspective, we've lost some players, but it's um, it's pretty clear with um, an offensive line, uh, tight ends, uh, a quarterback, and and a deep receiving core that we're going to have some success on offense as well. So. We'll, we'll do a deeper dive here, um, you know, after the spring game and, and give you a better sense. But um, a good spring, a healthy spring. We, we had no injuries of any kind. We still have another game, you know, or another uh, practice and, and spring game to go through. Um, but all in all, um, I think we walk away here with a, a better understanding of our football team and the strengths and weaknesses and, and where we need to go in the offseason. Uh, well described there of Kelly over the last couple of weeks taking away what they've learned about their team heading into the offseason. And really, my, my takeaway from that soundbite was having Kelly break down his offense and understanding that, look, even after losing the Heisman Trophy winner, two first-round wide receivers, which should have been the Bolitnikoff Award winner as the best receiver in college football and you know, the best two uh, in, in college football since Justin Jefferson, it, it, when, when you're talking about Brian Thomas uh, and guys that should have their name called both within the top 20. And you still got the firepower that, that Kelly and, and his staff has. Uh, he's got a great uh, take on, on Camordi and Pimpton uh, later that we'll hear. In fact, let's hear it now, Stewie. This is number four talking about the young tight ends, and he really goes into Camorian and Pimpton and talking about another guy that, look, we talked about last season when LSU signed him, and, and there were some, you know, maybe some um, so, some too high of expectation early on 
on Pimpton, especially looking back and knowing what you had in Jaden Daniels' ability to run the ball and stretch the ball with neighbors and Thomas and and guys like that. But now here, Pimpton in year two, starting to gain the trust of Kelly and staff. Here is Brian Kelly talking about uh, Kamori and Pimpton, the, the, the Texas product now in year two here at LSU. Well, I think with um, uh, KP, I think it's, um, you know, I think we've always felt like he was going to be, you know, a dynamic uh, presence as a pass catcher. I think it was, um, you know, feeling more comfortable within, you know, the structure of the offense and and understanding what to do and how to do it. And then... um, becoming more physical as, as an inline uh, presence as a blocker and, and, and I think he's established I think he's established that this spring where will he unseat Mason no uh, but can he compliment him yes and if, if ever that we needed him to go in there as the singular tight end he can do the jobs and, and I think that that's what we needed to see from him um, I think what what we see from from Mac is a guy that has improved in the pass catching and route uh, running and 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 I think more than anything else awareness in the passing game. I thought that there was a lack of awareness at times in the passing game. Now crossing routes and dig routes and things of that nature, there's a much better awareness, and he continues to get better in in the run game. So. I think we're really pleased with the development of both of them and and Mason as well. I mean, he, you know, he's a he's a player that we're going to count on much more than we did last year. I mean, he's going to be a central figure in what we do, and 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 Garrett looks to him as well. And and so I, I think that in in this offense, the tight end will be featured um, quite regularly. Good soundbite there on Brian, from Brian Kelly speaking about his tight ends, not only in Kamori uh, and Pimpton and Mac Markway, the two youngsters, is Pimpton really overall improving since his time on campus and Markway getting better as a route runner and a pass catcher and just hearing the expectation and leadership on a guy like Mason Taylor. Really that tight end room has been one that has been fast-tracked to really elite status very quickly under Brian Kelly's uh, direction. Here he is talking about last season's pass defense that must improve. Obviously, it was uh, as bad as it's ever been here at LSU uh, and as bad as the league has seen. Here is Kelly talking about some of the emphasis to improving those points. There's no doubt there's, uh, there's a compete level uh, for the football that, that was that was lacking last year, and, and let, let's put it in context. We were playing with freshmen, you know, at, at corner at, at a probably a, a good portion of the season, and so, you know, they they were hesitant um, to to play, you know, uh, an aggressive style of defense. Um, I just think you. You know, you have some players there with more confidence uh, in the ability to do so. Uh, I think you've got, you know, some veteran safeties um, back there that, you know, are are playing, uh, you know, with a lot more, I think, experience and confidence. So I think a, co- a combination of experience, confidence, um, and, and just overall athleticism has, has helped that um, this spring. Improvement in the defensive backfield, especially on that pass defense. Uh, some shiny spots that are going to help there. These freshman safeties that have come in. And Joel Watson out of West Feliciana. And Joel Rogers, uh, Joel Rogers from uh, West Feliciana and Deshaun McBride. Uh, sound like Brian Kelly. I was about to say, I didn't know if you were going to do it. <laughs> here RJ is, uh, Bitten. Here is Kelly talking about the two early enrollees. How they doing? A lot of players. So really well um you know rogers has been a little bit limited because of the shoulder so he hasn't been allowed to have the contact but he's been in you know virtually all the drills and you know he's starting to 
you know, find his way and feel more comfortable. And, and he's gotten a lot of work in the last probably week or so. Um, and I think he's going to be a fine player for us. Uh, McBride, on the other hand, is uh, rangy, athletic, and he's a guy that's going to factor in. Uh, a, a, He's one that you'll see a lot of, right, on, on Saturday. And we're excited about his future. Um, I think he's got a bright future, so you'll see a lot of him on, on Saturday. They love McBride, huh? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you go out there, you'd fall in love with him quick, too. Uh, new staff. This is seven, Stewie. Uh, new defensive staff for LSU. What has Brian Kelly made of it? Throughout the spring. Um. Well, you know, they know each other, right? I mean, Blake and, and Bo, you know, worked together. You know, Kevin worked with, with um, Blake, you know, and Jake. So the, these are guys that, you know, weren't plucked out of, you know, different you know, areas and didn't know each other. So there was a natural fit there with all of them. And, and that's obviously a positive. Um, they're demanding. Um, but they're not demeaning in, in any way. And, and they coach their guys hard. Um, but it's LSU. And, and we need to bring LSU's, you know, defensive, you know, um, persona back. And so I think they're doing a really good job in, in um, getting our defense to play the level they need to. We need to continue to recruit. We need to continue to develop. Um, but I like the energy. I, I like the way our players have responded this spring. And, and I expect our defense to, to continue to get better. Some offensive guys that have stood out for Brian Kelly over the last couple of weeks. Why? Chris Hinton's had a really mm. good spring. You know, I think, mm. you know, I've talked about Kyron, but Chris Hinton's been mm. really solid for us. Um, mm. I think the last week, C.J. Daniels has really settled in nicely. You can see his veteran kind of um, experience starting to show um, as he gets more comfortable within our offense. Um, I, I think, you know, it's, it's just there's a lot of depth. I think Aaron Anderson's had a really good spring for us, um, and he'll contribute to what we're doing. Mm. I just I just like the depth of the wide receiver, you know, core in itself. There's there's probably seven seven guys that can contribute, but you know, Chris and you know certainly Kyron, um, CJ. I think Samson's had a good spring. He's beginning to emerge. Um, we're, we're going to be in a pretty good spot there at the wide receiver position, offensive line, tight end. I think, you know, really developing the number two quarterback. There's another area that you really should pay attention to. I mean, there's a battle going on there right now for that number two position. Um, you know, A.J. And, and Ricky are battling that out right now. They're going to play a lot on Saturday. And, and th they're, that's a pretty good battle right now. So... Um, getting that one to kind of come together as well um, will be another thing. But I, I, that's what I like on the offense right now. Chris Hinton. Chris Hinton. Watch out for him. New player. New player. It's like, it's Got to be tough to know 105 names. Got to be tough to go up there and speak of it uh, live on your feet. But that's what happens when they hire you. That comes with the paycheck. I mean, come on. How long has he been here? I mean, this has been this has been a couple of times where you've had a couple of I, I get it and, and and no disrespect, but I get it if you're talking about some walk ons or maybe some guys that are new to the program and that that you you may not necessarily hear or see a ton of, but Chris Hilton has paid his time, paid his dues, gone through a lot of adversity, stuck around in a transfer portal world is is a guy that, that you know, if he would have put his name in, I don't think it would have not made a lot of sense, right? I mean, I, I think that was something that, um, you know, would be understandable in today's world, but to see him stick it out and, you know, have the coach call him Hinton twice at this time of his career, I, I think uh, Brian Kelly probably should seek him out and apologize to him if if that gets out. But, I, you know, I, Hilton's so to himself and kind of a quiet guy, he may not even recognize or, or that stuff may not even bother him. But I just think from a – 
a veteran experience standpoint, that might even start to hit some of the guys you know that that have been there for a while. Some of the guys that have Hilton's back, um, because I mean, this is this is not the first time that this has happened. And again, like. A lot of people to keep up this with is, to understand. This is yeah. not a, you know, like by no means you have to go up there and you got to, you know, pronunciate and enunciate and, and announce everybody's name correctly. But there's going to be some slip ups. But, you know, to double down on it, I mean, he's called his recruiting um, the department head, J.R. Belton, who is phenomenal at what he does and is, you know, a lot of the the, the back and centerpiece of, of, you know, a lot of big time wins for LSU on the recruiting grounds. I mean, you know, he's mispronounced his name a couple of times. I, again, I, I'm not diving in, but these are some of the things that I think, you know, at, at this point for Chris Hilton's career, you got to get that stuff right. You got to get that stuff right. Yeah, I mean, it's like you said, Chris Hilton has been here for three years. This is going into his fourth year. He's battled adversity. He's somebody that I think the difference is, like, I understand you're not going to know everybody's name on your roster. Or at least if you're, but if you're going to speak on him and somebody that's going to make plays for you and has made plays for you in the past, it's going to be a, a, a pretty important piece of your offense. Just feels like something that I don't know if it's a a, fru, a a Freudian slip, or if it's just something that he, something that you should just be able to speak on. Well, he wasn't asked about Hilton directly. He's the one that brought him up, right? You know, I mean, so what, that once that happened, I think you could kind of tell even after the double down where he kind of was kind of trying to find his way out of this answer that he had created himself. Yeah, it doesn't feel very. It didn't feel like he was very confident speaking on exactly the wide receiver room. And he's. I mean, I don't think he necessarily has to. He's the head coach. If that's your wide receiver coach doing that, then I think you have a bigger issue. No, he works right. with him every day. Right. He's just. And you've seen Brian Kelly at practice where he's yeah, very he much at a three thousand foot view, observing, going over to different groups. But uh, it's a hard thing to defend also in the same breath where I'm trying to, like, you know, it can happen, but it shouldn't, I guess, is where it, no how doubt. I see it. No uh, remember Katie's Restaurant in New Orleans. Get down there and see him this weekend. Great weekend to post up and get down to Kay's. Looks like it's going to be a phenomenal weekend. French Quarter Fest down in New Orleans uh, this weekend. If you're out and about and looking for a place to post up and eat cold beer, great service. Fantastic menu from our friends over at Katie's online, katiesinmidcity.com. Katiesinmidcity.com is where you find them. Uh, get in touch with Katie's there as uh, they'll take care of you today. They have the sister restaurant, Francesca's, which is located over in Lakeview. Stop and see them. Katiesinmidcity.com. We'll be back hour two. Shay's supposed to join us. We'll see. Uh, come back with us. Jordy Collada Show live here from Click Your Digital. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. The Jordy Collada Show is brought to you by A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225 485 8022. A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Hey, Tiger fans, when you're traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, make sure to visit Tom and Wright Granning at Go Mart and On The Go Deli, where you can fill up your tank and your belly. Go Mart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need on your trip. Located at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where the Po' Boys are so good you'll swear you're in Cajun country. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. All right, buddy. Make nope. it a good shot. Oh, yeah.
Stick in the roofing. For a hole in your roof, for a whole new roof. Hey, Greg, roof up. 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 Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. Well, the Oscars Andrews Sports Medicine Institute collaborative effort uh, was uh, an idea from Dr. Andrews and myself to bring together two great names, the Andrews name and the Oscar name, to elevate the quality of care for athletes in the state of Louisiana, where he's from. I always thought I would come back to Louisiana to practice orthopedics with my subspecialty being sports medicine. This was an opportunity through Oshners to come back and work the entire state to help develop and take sports medicine to a new level. As an orthopedic surgeon, what this means in the future in terms of you know, access for our community, to the type of care that Dr. Andrews pioneered, words can't describe how valuable that is. Oshner has a great opportunity here to, to really grow, and Dr. Burnham, of course, is the mainstay of making that happen. If you want to have first-class sports medicine care, check in with Dr. Burnham and his group, and you'll be more than impressed and pleased. Fourier Insurance Agency, established in 1946, helping you with your home, auto, commercial, life and health insurance needs, Around in Baton Rouge at 4275 Government Street and online at FourierAgency.com. Whatever insurance you're in the market for, home, auto, commercial, contractors, life and health, get in touch with Fourier Insurance Agency, FourierAgency.com, or give them a call at 225-383-0682, Fourier Agency. Get Gordon. And get it done, yeah. Everybody know Gordon in a 225. And he done leave with Big Four. He got Buku ties for Rari sliding, flying in a new cool ride. And every time I ride by, I see a brand new sign. I'm a Gordon, I know that he gon' get it done. Whether it's a big truck crash or a hit and run. Recovery funds, he fighting to get a ton. Mike Epps, man, we all about the Benjamin. Handling injuries, man, are you kidding me? Gordon McKernan, that's champion energy. Yeah, family man with a family plan. Get Gordon, he gon' fix it like a handy man. Get Gordon, and get it done. Hey, Chino. Cut my headphones up, bro. Yeah, right there. Now I'm focused on getting deposits. Evil in the way, now I'm just driving around it. They said I need the soul searching, I already found it. I unlocked my other side, now I'm sounding astounded. Drive by and let it ride like a whip in a Tesla. Pressure never fades me, cause I'm bigger than pressure. I'm on my grind, bullshit. Can't fit on my schedule. I'ma do what's best for me, you can keep all your lectures. Spend the summer stacking bread, might be gone till November. Pulling up like Trey Young just to freeze up December. I got niggas on the blood like traditional sinners. OGs love me, so I hang with traditional winners. I took a break for a minute, I had to go charge up. Had to focus on my business, I'm coming back smarter. Hit up DJ, sell them go like I'm dropping the carter. Coming back like KD, it's time to go harder. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you. Tiger standing over a birdie at 17. He's even right now. As we'll catch you up on what's happening here. Shay Dixon set to join us here to start hour two. We will talk about the Kentucky basketball search as it seems like this job is staying open. Scott Drew, longtime Baylor coach, announced yesterday he's staying in Waco, which is nuts. You think about the Alabama coach and the Baylor coach have now told Kentucky no. And it looks like they're on to the BYU coach as Tiger leaves it. Three feet yeah, short? Yeah, deadly short. Sheesh. Go get one, Tiger. He likes to play the first round. This is still his first round, obviously, continuing from yesterday. But he always plods along the first day. He says, if I can get out of here even to one under, he always feels like he has a shot because of his knowledge of the course and how much it changes from whether it be pressure or the fact that, you know, not everybody's going to play consistently well at Augusta. Just It seems like the moment it gets to people in the course gets harder throughout the week. So... If he can remain in the hunt, he always likes his chances going into a Sunday at Augusta. Uh, we'll talk more about uh, the Masters and uh, the Kentucky jobs. It looks like BYU's Mark Pope 
former Kentucky player, is the odds-on favorite now. But let's get back to LSU football and uh, what's happening here with the spring game coming up and what's it meaning for recruiting. Best in the business is Shay Dixon over at On3. He's a part of the Bengal Tiger podcast that you can catch as well uh, as uh, you can catch him now. Uh, a month full of Fridays that Shay has been here. This is the fourth Friday in a row. Um, a man who was uh, having a little bit of a problem finding the classroom there <laughs> for a while. Seems Mr. As, Dixon. as dialed in as anyone here uh, heading into a little post-spring talk for LSU football. Shay, good morning. How are you? Hang on. Like, oh, wait. There we okay, are. So I'm in, the, I'm in this class. All right. So now <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yes. Yeah, progress reports are out. You saw your grade, and I decided to, it's time to, to dial it in. Obviously, you do not know where your assigned seat is. It's all right. You sat in a different spot every week, but we'll take it. Just the fact that you're here has been, it's a been, a, win for the, been a win for the class. It's like a solar eclipse. Yeah, thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. You got it, buddy. <laughs> Uh, all right, what are we doing here on, on recruiting? As I'm reading this stuff on Jakeem Stewart, who I am madly in love with, the defensive tackle out of St. Aug. Is there a true possibility that he could reclassify? And what is the, the latest with the top defensive tackle in the 2026 cycle? Yeah, for anyone who missed it, uh, he was on um, the Five Star Flex uh, with Philip Dukes this week and on three. And very well spoken. You got to remember, this is a kid at St. Aug who is going into his junior year right now, and has been dominant. He is the number one overall player in the country for next year. We talk about that for this class. That's Bryce Underwood, the number one overall prospect, already committed to LSU. Right. Well, now you've got someone in your own backyard in New Orleans, in St. Aug, playing on the D line, and he's ranked number one in the country. Obviously, by default, would be the number one D lineman. And he talked up his relationship with Bo Davis. Obviously, Frank Wilson has big ties there. He talked about Southern Cal being in the mix. He talked about a number of schools, really, that have kind of stood out as the who's who. I mean, everybody Jordy has offered him. Mm -hmm. I went and saw him play at Zachary. He was a man amongst boys. I mean, he is college ready right now. And Philip Duke, they got onto that topic. They broached that topic, being college ready right now. That was a message coaches had. So Philip asked him, hey, have you ever thought about reclassifying? And he said, look, I've talked about it. We've gone over it. But uh, right now, uh, much like myself, showing up every Friday at 8 o'clock, uh, it's about <laughs> the classroom. Uh, but he did say that they had things lined up at least to where when he got to the summer that he could make a decision on it. I took that to mean then you load up on summer coursework, you take some extra stuff in the fall, then – you could potentially reclassify as an early enrollee. You could reclassify uh, as a summer enrollee. Mm. Is not said for sure what he's doing, right? But I, I don't I'm know. All big I'd, fella. Be, I'd, I'd be curious if this one doesn't pan out. If, as a guy before his junior year, you know, in the middle of the semester, spring semester, is already acknowledging, hey, it's something I've thought of. And the pieces are there, uh, and, and we'll kind of revisit it in a few months. Mm. So where would that put a commitment for him, Shay? I guess in theory, if he reclassifies and is into this class, he would either sign, sign in December or February. So um, he would be in there with this Bryce Underwood group and uh, this number one class that LSU's gone back and forth with Ohio State on. But – uh, that ball's in Jakeem's court. We'll see what he does. Uh, I had not heard any rumblings on that until Jakeem himself brought it up. So let's get to um, probably June, yeah. I bet, May, June, July, uh, and we'll either know if he is trying to do it or if it's something where he says, hey, look, I'm good. I'll stay in high school uh, two more years here, another year and a half, uh, and then in the early in December. So will be something to monitor, giving just, as you said, Jordy, is – Someone you can fall in love with. Great kid, but he is an absolute freak on the football field. And boy, does LSU, ever, everybody, people need D linemen. There are just not a lot of elite interior D linemen out there. Uh, he started LSU, and I don't mean this disrespecting to, 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 to the current roster, uh, but but I believe he would probably start this year at LSU as a, as a, as a junior in high school. Yes. Um, more present day. That's going to be fun to watch that story, Shay, and we'll continue to monitor it with you guys over at 
uh, at the Bengal Tiger and at on three. But this past week, Bo Davis had Philip Bleedy in town, Bleedy, uh in town from Indiana, uh, who's put his name in the transfer portal. He was also someone who spent time in Lubbock at Texas Tech. Uh, what did you hear about his visit? Yeah, Bleedy, and I think he's wrapping that up now. I'll have to talk to him on the phone to to see how it went. But he had cut off uh, a little bit of. He was going to go to Arizona. This isn't surprising. He goes to Washington. Their new head coach is Jed Fish. Uh, then he was going to go to Arizona where Jed Fish coached. And right after his Washington trip, he cancels his Arizona visit and says, I don't need to see what they have to offer there. So I guess when he was at Washington, Jed Fish informed him of what Arizona has to offer him versus what Washington uh, can bring. So he checked out Washington. Now he's been at LSU. He'll go to Oklahoma here next. And I think it'll come in. Not this weekend, but next week. Uh, and from there, we'll sort of navigate his recruitment and find out what he wants to do. This is a guy who's been at Texas Tech, played three years there, went to Indiana, now can leave as a grad transfer, uh, but is also taking this sort of – he's got a he's got a lot on his mind, I think, in terms of how this visit will play out, uh, given that he's married, he has a kid, his family's very involved in this, so – uh, I think this is more than just him and how can I transfer out and play on a bigger stage. I think he is really looking for, hey, if I want you know, to ha- set myself up for any sort of success at this next level in the NFL, I want to get in front of on a team and in front of a lot of cameras and all of that. And from the start, that's what he said is enamored him about LSU was that they offered a chance to compete for a national championship and then be developed by D- Bo Davis and uh, that was something he was certainly interested in. So uh, coming out of this visit, he got here Wednesday, but the weather was real bad Wednesday. So I would bet that uh, that delayed it a little bit. It's usually a multi-night stay. So uh, by today, tomorrow, we'll kind of get a feel for how that one went. Uh, the running back situation, obviously you've got Harlan Berry committed <clears throat> in the class already, and then you've got um, really three, including Barry, uh, top 15, top 12 running backs in the country uh, when you're talking about James Simon up at Calvary and then JT Lindsay at Alexandria. And, Shay, we saw some big movement this week. Lindsay was, in fact, offered by LSU, which he called a dream. Does that say more about where Lindsay stands, or does that say more about where they believe they stand with Simon? I think it's, you, have to make, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to make it about Lindsay first, right? I mean, yes, Simon is on this kind of world tour right now of eight to nine schools. And these are unofficial visits. So he's going to get done with this and then likely line up official visits and then take all of those. And we're talking about James Simon out of Calvary Baptist, North Louisiana, a guy that LSU's been on for a long time here. But JT Lindsay emerged. I mean, I had been hearing from sources after Alexandria's season that they're like, look, there is this kid JT Lindsay over at Ash who tore it up uh, this past season and 4-0, Great track stuff from when he was a sophomore, you know, LSU, we're going to keep an eye on him. Well, whenever we got a look at him and look, track season rolled around indoor, he was running well. And our rankings team, Charles Power and Cody Blair, uh, watched every single running back in the country. And uh, Charles called me back and he was like, dude, good looking out on that guy over at Alexandria. I was like, oh, you're thinking kind of like a four-star guy? And he was like, bro, yeah, four-star. <laughs> He's like, He's top 150. He was like, this kid went from unranked to the number 11 running back in the country. <laughs> so this is, I think, also as much about Lindsay. It's the yeah. reality that when is Frank Wilson at running back letting the best guys leave the state? Like, yes, you can wait around on James Simon forever and get him and land two backs and feel great about it, but you're going to let JT Lindsay go somewhere else, and he could potentially be a guy who is a big-time player at 100% can play at the SEC level, and Jordy, maybe most importantly right now, you let off with it. A guy in my interview said, I've, as a kid from Ash, I've dreamed of this. I saw DJ Chark do it. I saw Jacoby Giller go there, and now it's about to start. I've always wanted to be a Tiger. A kid who's saying that is a lot less likely to transfer out if he's not playing year one or year two, and he sits in and develops and works on his body in this game, and you look up in year three and you're starting – if that kid's Corey Kiner from Ohio, mm-hmm. he comes down here and actually plays in year one and then says, look, I'm a little homesick. 
the portal's open. I can transfer without any hesitation. I'm going back home. I'm going to Cincinnati. So I think the more they focus on these Louisiana kids who can play here, they're making their evals and they know, hey, look, this guy can play at the SEC at this level. Go for it. And I don't think for me, if I'm James Simon, I'm not letting it affect me. I know James Simon's attitude is, I'm the real deal. I mean, he's not going to be scared away by a Harlem Berry. I don't think a JT Lindsay would either. Is it a lot that JT Lindsay ends up at LSU? I feel very, very good about that. James Simon, I don't know because Simon is just taking a lot of visits, looking in a lot of directions. And the reality is, again, Frank is going to keep the best players at home. And at the same time, James Simon, if JT Lindsay commits, James Simon's more than welcome to commit. I mean, give me, gosh, I don't even know those classes, Jordy, but we, and Stewie, any of y'all help, but the Michael Ford days, it was Michael Ford, Terrence McGee, Alfred Blue. Like, Spencer Ware. There were times where he was signing, yeah, Spencer Ware, where he was signing three backs a class. So the, it was rare that you had those Caden Durham's where you only have one back you sign. Uh, Frank's done this before where he's kept three Louisiana guys at home. So, I won't be surprised if JT Lindsay pops, and uh, I also do not think it means that it's over for James Simon. Uh, back to the defensive line, Shay. You guys have a good feature in, in, in a piece about a p- uh, potential flip uh, right now in the SEC with Bo Davis doing work. And and, Bri- and Brian Kelly yesterday, Shay, was, was asked, I, I'd imagine you were in the room when he was asked about what, what attention are you paying to uh, position groups outside of defensive line in, in the transfer portal, and he blatantly was like, none. <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's the position that's getting all of our attention. W- what is the emphasis there? I know we talked about uh, about our big fellow from, uh, uh, from, from, from St. Aug in Indiana, but what is the, 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 the emphasis right now on, on defensive line and how much work is Bo Davis and the crew uh, chumming up? A lot of emphasis uh, on D-line right now, and while they don't have any commitments yet, uh, I think that's a little by design, I want to say, because Bo Davis gets here in mid-January. He's getting his, he's figuring out who he's got, what he's got, um, kind of watching film from them from practice from a year ago or in games. You look, you only return two scholarship interior defensive linemen. So, he gets a feel for all that, and then he turns around and says, okay, let's build this board. Here's who we like, and they're at a spot now where I think they are uh, kind of a good grip of, uh, of guys they're recruiting, and we've seen a lot of heavy Texas influence. Like He got Brandon Brown to commit to Texas. He's a guy that he's been pretty heavily after, Miriam Charles, uh, Dylan Battle, uh, Jordan Crawford over in Alabama, um, here in, or there in South Mississippi, uh, Maddox at Oak Grove, his brother. Uh, was a quarterback that signed with A&M, or maybe he actually signed with Ole Miss uh, this past cycle in the end. Uh, Zion Williams, another kid out of Lufkin, uh, who he had recruited heavily to Texas uh, and now has gotten to campus multiple times at LSU. And uh, Buddy Mathis is out there. I mean, I could keep naming all of these guys who are play defensive line, could play DT or nose, really fill a need. Uh, but I think one guy to watch, and, and we'll see this weekend as someone you – mentioned here at the start jeremiah mcleod who is a georgia native but he's in florida now in havana but committed to mississippi state and he committed to mississippi state a few months ago but right after he committed lsu offered with bo davis florida came in and offered with gerald chapman who had previously been on staff at lsu as an assistant d-line coach uh a few years back and then georgia jumped in the mix in march and uh with an offer so the folks at the Mississippi State side said, hey, look, this is a kid who's probably going to reopen things. When he had committed to state, that was his big offer. Now he's got LSU, Georgia, Florida. Like, expect mm-hmm. him to probably go take some visits and don't be shocked if they'll open it back up. Well, here comes the visits. This weekend he will be at the spring game. That'll give him Saturday. I think he's told me he's going to do multiple days on campus. But uh, do not be shocked. if uh, Much like Karius Kern, who I talked about before on the show, uh, who was the number one player in Arkansas, O-lineman. He came down, spent one weekend at LSU on Monday. He announces, hey, look, I'm decommitting from Arkansas, and I'm going to now take some visits, uh, LSU being one of them. So I won't be surprised if McLeod, who is a big-time D-lineman uh, in this class, so I think whose ranking will continue to rise with all these teams that are on him, and he had a really good junior year, looks healthy again. 
uh, that if he doesn't visit LSU and if all goes well, uh, that he reopens his recruitment. He, there was some hope that he would immediately commit, but um, just from talking to people around McLeod, I think that we could see him visit, reopen things, and then set some dates to say, hey, look, I'll come on an official visit for LSU, Florida, Georgia, and then make a decision from there. But uh, I don't think we're too far off, Jory, from at least starting to hear about d and getting into the class. Uh, rapid fire on a couple of players. Defensive back out of Missouri City, Texas, Cade Phillips. What have you heard on him? Yeah, he was here this week. Uh, he came on Tuesday for practice, and that's been such a big thing for Brian Kelly, right, that um, very often they're trying to get guys in uh, for practice so that they can get a look at uh, kind of what each position group, the team, everything looks like. Then they go into film study with the team after practice. And uh, I think in the minds of the staff, it just gives a recruit a lot better of a, uh, of a feel of a um, kind of day to day, how it plays out if you end up going to LSU. Uh, so they've had kids in for not just these weekend scrimmages, but as I said, just midweek practices, uh, what come over for the day. Uh, and he did made the drive in from Texas uh, as I said, on Tuesday was the day Kate Phillips was here, but he's another top 100 prospect. They have a number of them already committed uh, as well, but he's a safety, a DB, but a guy who's ranked right now uh, as a safety. And he said that he's been talking to really everyone on staff from Corey Raymond to Frank to Blake Baker uh, to Jake Olson. Um, and but on three, we have him ranked not just a top 100 player, but the number seven safety in the country. So, um, he's versatile. Um, he's also talked about, he said, look, I'm, I'm real long and I run track. And look, when you get around a guy like Corey Raymond, he said, Corey pulled me right in and said, Hey, you know, you can play some corner, right? <laughs> so now he's got that on his mind of, Oh, well, maybe I should be playing some corner at the college level, uh, just with that length and speed. But, uh, LSU's put themselves firmly in the mix here. Uh, Baylor will get an official visit. That'll be this month, uh, here in a couple weeks. Uh, but LSU in June, Texas in June, A&M in June. Um, so I think it'll probably come down to LSU battling uh, those two big in-state teams, uh, both now in the SEC, uh, for a guy like him who is one of the higher-ranked uh, players in Texas, top 20 player in Texas on on three, uh, and coming out of Hightower in Missouri City, which is a big school. So um, more often uh, than I think the old Bama days with Saban, uh, we're going to see LSU now because they want to be active in East Texas, and they usually are. Uh, they're going to go head to head with A&M in Texas almost every single cycle for probably fifty percent or more of the guys that they end up getting. Uh, was that Corey Thompson from that Missouri City, Texas high school? Yes. Was that was that his high school? Mm-hmm. I, th- I think that was his high school. I, I know he was from Missouri City, Houston area. Uh, Shay, we, we, we've seen some, some, some people in, in your industry who cover recruiting, uh, talk about what the transfer portal is about to look like and how it's going to be wild here, uh, when it opens up this post spring, uh, opening, uh, we saw some news break yesterday of a former, uh, Louisiana or, or of a Louisiana native, a former Florida state now defensive back greedy Vance jr. Put his name into the portal any news on him anything that you can remember out of his recruitment out of high school on lsu being uh, or having any chance there and what are your expectations of the portal once it opens here in a couple of days yeah lsu i mean greedy vance is very well known in louisiana when he was in high school because he was a top 20 25 player in the state and had been around lsu a good bit but ultimately florida state was kind of one of his really big offers and he jumped on it and look he has spent a number of years there. He was in the yeah. 2020 class, maybe 2020, 2021. Um, so he's been in Tallahassee for a while now. I had heard rumblings that he might have entered last year, but he didn't. He ended up staying. I think for LSU, it's do you need a nickel type corner? And and really, if you're trusting Brian Kelly, the answer would be no. Um, that they're really just focused on DTs. I'm not going to rule them out. I talked to some sources that said, look, they're going to evaluate everyone that comes through the portal, and even more so when you're a Louisiana guy and you're from New Orleans and the staff already knows you. Like You're going to get put under the microscope. They're going to feel it out. I just still think it's one of those things where people will say, well, she doesn't have any corners. Well, that's not true. 
they have like 20 of them. They just mm-hmm. don't, we just don't know who is going to end up starting and what the depth will look like. Um, if they feel like they're in a position where they don't have enough depth, they don't feel like they can uh, put guys in position to where they'll be solid at corner uh, come fall, then maybe they go after a guy like Greedy Vance. We'll see. I'm not ruling it out. Um, but I do believe Brian Kelly where, and look, we can all look at it. Look at the roster. You don't have to go to practice. Just Google the roster and look who's on scholarship. When you only have two scholarship players at a position like D-tackle, which takes up two spots in this scheme, uh, whether it's a nose or, or just two tackles, if you only have two returning scholarship players and you're converting an O-lineman, you're taking a Juco guy and uh, a, you know, like a former walk-on in Preston Hickey's getting second-team reps, that's the position you've got to address. So I can understand why Brian Kelly would say, hey, look, first and foremost, D-tackle. That's where we – I don't see another position right now where I would have to run out and say we got to get help with that position. Now, let's see how this spring portal window plays out because I tell you right now, they don't need any DB corners. Well, what if two corners, three corners that think, hey, look, I'm a backup, I'm not playing, or I don't feel like I'm in the mix. What if they all hit the portal? Well – now you're down to where you're fighting that depth again. And maybe you can make a move for a portal guy. That said, guys like Greedy Vance are older in their career, so they're certainly going to want in and want to come in and compete right away to play or to start. Um, so you balance all those things. And uh, I do think this will be the wildest spring portal. And look, we've only been around the portal for a little while now, a few years, but this will be the wildest spring portal because it's the first time they're allowing underclassmen to transfer without hesitation, no problem, but also do it twice with no issues. So we've seen kids right now, I mean, who I've seen three, four total, who signed in December, went to campus, and already were like, I'm done. I'm entering the portal for the spring window, and I'll be out of here, and I didn't even spend a semester at the college. So, And they won't have to sit out. So for from that kind of perspective, yes, it'll be wild. I'll also trust a Louisiana native here, uh, old Kinder High's finest at quarterback turned uh, the GOAT, Hayes Fawcett, uh, who pretty much breaks every football edit commitment that's out there, uh, whenever he puts out multiple times uh, and says, hey, look, buckle in. Like, what's about to happen and the names you're about to see at the portal are wild. I'll trust him because uh, he, he knows. He's just w- – what makes him great at his job, he's not telling anybody what those names are. So – I'll believe him uh, here and what a lot of people are saying that, and it may not even be LSU related, but boy, there will be names hitting the portal that we're just not used to seeing. Guys who are already starting at places are going to be in the portal because they can say, look, I can go to that school instead and start. So why don't I just do that? And that's not something we've experienced before. You can also use it for leverage on an NIL deal. You know, I mean, it's just well, that's when you just if you're I've, I know a lot of coaches who said, Hey, look, my kid tells us he's going in the portal and then says, But I won't if you do this, we're <laughs> yeah. son, the computer's open. Log in right there. That's right. how you put your name in the portal. Uh, right. Go ahead and press submit. So uh I think that's a look, Jordan, that's another that's real. Coaches are fighting that is we don't want kids coming in here and saying, I'm in the portal, but I'll come back for this. No. We have those as you know, we've talked about it on the show before. Brian Kelly's kind of said it openly as all those conversations are had with LSU before you go into the portal. Once you're in the portal, we're not recruiting you anymore. That's on the other team. So if you come to the coaches and say, Hey, look, this is how I'm feeling. This is kind of where I'm at. That's when all those talks are happening. It's not once you hit the portal, but not every team's as fortunate as LSU. And there's a lot of coaches out there who kind of are battling that where kids enter and then say, kind of dangle the carrot of, do you want me or do you not? You kind of have to play the game uh, at a lot of schools. I just don't think LSU's one of them. Uh, Shay, last one. We'll get you out of here. Um, anything you're looking forward to in tomorrow's spring game? I mean, I don't know how much of a game it'll be, right? Uh, situational stuff. I don't even know how they said they're keeping kind of points like they did last year, which makes it for an odd affair. Um I know it's always fun to watch offense, and certainly I'd like to see how some of these new guys look. Uh, but I want to see how the D- the defense looks, and especially DB. I want to see Jordan Gilbert. I want to see Sage Ryan back at safety, how Major Burns looks at this new star position. And then 
what Ashton Stamps looks like and P.J. Woodland and uh, all of these guys who are getting some reps. They're young at corner because, for me, that's the biggest question, right? Like, you had the 113th worst defense, and Brian Kelly, you decided to fire. Um, and I don't think anybody disagreed with him, but everybody that coached on defense, and you went out and made all new hires. And the expectation is, can you get to the number 60 defense? Like, can you cut that in half? I don't need the best in the country. Like, get me some improvement. Uh, I think we can start to see signs of that. Uh, from Blake Baker and company this weekend, uh, just with just kind of how they run around, who they've got personnel wise. So, for me, and what I would call probably a spring game that the average fan would find somewhat boring because it'll be a lot of situational stuff and uh, not a full on like this team versus that team. Uh, I'm going to be watching the defense. I think that's the by far the most important element. Uh, Shay, thank you as always. Have a great weekend. Enjoy this beautiful weather. We'll talk to you next week. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on, guys. Uh, remember, Daily, we're brought to you by Pierce Bespoke, which is a mo uh, mobile tailor service headquartered right here in Baton Rouge. And a proud sponsor of our friends over at the Flower Fest, which was hugely successful this past week, uh, especially because of that 5,400 that we can hey. see. That's right. That is the Dr. Artie Brown who you hear in the studio here. Of course, a part of the Flower Fest. She'll be here shortly. Uh, looks like she's got some gifts. Uh, we are also <laughs> proud to announce our partnership with Pierce Bespoke. We love Pierce Bespoke. Grayson and his team, easy to work with. They'll come to your spot, whether it's the office. Uh, if you're in town doing business, just know that they come to you. A mobile tailor service can get you fitted up uh, for that sport coat, suit, pants, anything that you're looking for, custom designed shirts. They can take care of all of it. If you want to shop them online, you can at PierceBespoke.com. If you use the uh, promo code Jordy Colada Show, they'll mention, uh, if you mention the show, uh, you can save $200 on your first custom fit. So uh, check them out over there at PierceBespoke.com. What you guys doing? Uh, I'm just thinking about what Shay said about the greedy van situation. I, I just, I mean, I don't, you want Louisiana kids, but it's like in this situation, Last year would have been a better, you know. Like, they want to overload a spot, right? It would have been a better fit last season. Now it's like you have numbers, so it's and you have numbers and talent. So it's like, why would we bring an extra body in the room when we're already figuring out where the pecking order is? And you got guys coming off injury, Zay Alexander, J.K. Johnson. So it's it just numbers I just, are tight, right? I just don't think it makes sense numbers wise. Uh, all right. No, I buy it. I buy it. Yeah. I'll and you need defensive tackles. Like, got to have defensive you, tackles. You got to have defensive tackles. So. He did retweet uh, Sherman Wilson and also commented on a Jay and Daniels post in his last yeah, Twitter I mean, action. Look. It's a guy Louisiana with, kid. With experience. That's that's the only thing that I would point to if you had to, you know, make or break your decision based off him. He's played. He's, a, what, 71 tackles, four picks, and 12 passes defended in his college career, and he has one year eligibility left. Like that's a player that you can plug and play, right. and he doesn't have to be a doesn't have to be a starter. Somebody that can play. What was old boy's name from Oklahoma State? From North Louisiana, played one year. The Jerry Kelly Bernard Swisher. Converse. Yeah, I mean, I understand, but I'm just saying, like from the number standpoint. No, I'm with you. You just with you. you just look at. Got to be wise on who you right. hand them to. All right, the doc is here, uh, Dr. Artie Brown. We will have her in next to close out our week as uh, it has been a fast week here. Mm -hmm. it, dude, Man, unbelievable. It's crazy week how fast by. this week shot by. Uh, all right, come back with us. The doc's in. We'll be recapping Flower Fest, and uh, we'll be talking bisectomies. Yes. Today is the it is, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's nut cutting season. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come back Smith. with us. <laughs> right. She urges the vasectomy. Vasectomy <laughs> advocate. What's up? What's happening? Chilling with a couple of cool guys. You? Chilling and watching some tube. <laughs> Hold on. Did you do it? Hold on. Did you do it? Rusa. Rusa. Hold on. Rusa. 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 Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. 
That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Ochsner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Ochsner Andrews Institute, long live you. Head health is incredibly important for our student athletes. One of the best ways we're trying to address concussions is on the front end. We're trying to prevent these before they happen. And a big part of that is speaking to the athletes, letting them know what to expect. Okay, speaking to the parents, what to look out for, talking to the coaches so they know the vital importance. Some of the big things we're looking for with the concussion, which is, you know, a traumatic brain injury is one, was there a mechanism? Was there an injury that took place that could lead to this? Often a direct blow to the head, a head-to-head -head hit. If someone's showing signs of concussion, our first step is always to remove them from activity, get them to a place where there's less stimuli, where we can really just sit down and get a feel for the athlete, what they're feeling. We're looking for headache, we're looking for dizziness, any sign that coordination is off, that something's just not right, get a good evaluation them to understand what's going on. It's not worth the risk that may be there to kind of ignore it because there are very serious consequences if we don't treat a concussion properly. Click Here Digital, the home of the Jordy Collada Show. Online at clickheredigital.com, if you're looking to set Google ads, set social media campaigns, learn about SEO, display video, or even creative, Click Here Digital has the answer for you. Online at clickheredigital.com or email me directly, Jordy at clickheredigital.com. Family calls family. That saying resonates even more as your family grows. And we can't seem to stop growing. Meet the newest member of the Get Gordon family, Penny's cousin, Rosie. Rosie already knows, the larger your family, the more people you have to lift you up during trying times. Just like at Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys, we've grown to over 200 team members with over 50 local attorneys. So whether you pick Penny, employ Ellie, roll with Rosie, or get Gordon, we want to be your lawyers for life. Your lawyers for life. Oh. Phil's Oyster Bar, a staple of South Louisiana since 1945, located in Southdown Shopping Center and online at philsoysterbar.com. If you log online, you can learn about the private party schedule, the catering menu, and even order online. Daily lunch specials Monday through Friday. Learn about the history when Gus Piazza took it over in the early 70s, made it an absolute stop in for everyone who came through Baton Rouge, and now Anthony, his son, carrying on the tradition. Phil's Oyster Bar, Southdown Shopping Center, and online, philsoysterbar.com. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. The Jordy Collada Show is brought to you by A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225-485-8022. A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Hey Tiger fans, when you're traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, make sure to visit Tom and Wright Granning at Go Mart and On The Go Deli, where you can fill up your tank and your belly. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need on your trip. Located at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where the Po' Boys are so good you'll swear you're in Cajun country. At Ochsner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Ochsner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Ochsner Andrews Institute, long live you. 
All right, buddy. Make yep. it a good shot. Oh, yeah. Sticking the roof in. Hey Greg, roof up? Roofs up. Roofs up. Roofs up. Roofs up. Roofs up. Roofs up. Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. Well, the Oscars Andrews Sports Medicine Institute collaborative effort uh, was uh, an idea from Dr. Andrews and myself to bring together two great names, the Andrews name and the Oscar name, to elevate the quality of care for athletes in the state of Louisiana, where he's from. I always thought I would come back to Louisiana to practice orthopedics with my subspecialty being sports medicine. This was an opportunity through Oshners to come back and work with the entire state to help develop and take sports medicine to a new level. As an orthopedic surgeon, what this means in the future in terms of you know, access for our community, to the type of care that Dr. Andrews pioneered, words can't describe how valuable that is. Oshner has a great opportunity here to, to really grow, and Dr. Burnham, of course, is the mainstay of making that happen. If you want to have first-class sports medicine care, check in with Dr. Burnham and his group, and you'll be more than impressed and pleased. Fourier Insurance Agency, established in 1946, helping you with your home, auto, commercial, life and health insurance needs, Around in Baton Rouge at 4275 Government Street and online at FourierAgency.com. Whatever insurance you're in the market for, home, auto, commercial, contractors, life and health, get in touch with Fourier Insurance Agency, FourierAgency.com, or give them a call at 225-383-0682, Fourier Agency. Get Gordon. And get it done, yeah. Everybody know Gordon in a 225. And he done link with Big Four. He got Buku ties for Rari sliding, flying in a new cool ride. And every time I ride by, I see a brand new sign. I'm with Gordon. I know that he gon' get it done. Whether it's a big truck crash or a hit and run. Recovery funds, he fighting to get a ton. Mike Epps, man, we all about the Benjamin. Handling injuries, man, are you kidding me? Gordon McKernan, a champion energy. Yeah, family man with a family plan. Get Gordon, he gon' fix it like a handy man. Get Gordon. And get it done. Technique. Uh, welcome back, Jordy Colada Show, live here on this Friday, closing down what is going to be, it looks like it would be a beautiful weekend, it was a beautiful weekend last weekend in Baton Rouge where we celebrated the Flower Fest, uh, the fourth annual, 
Flower Fest. Congratulations to Amy, her entire team. Uh, Dr. Artie Brown was uh, huge for us in our money raising efforts, which we went head to head with Justin Vincent. Yeah. And right at the last minute, hey, cross that finish line <laughs> as the winner. Uh, still then think, it feels check good. The tape, still think yeah, Justin check. Vincent hates me for check. y'all making me call him <laughs> cold call on a on a Friday morning. Uh, he's he'll fine. be over it. He's, he's over it. He's, he's over it. He's, he's over all right. It. He's still just sulking the loss. <laughs> <laughs> the majority finished officially with uh, five thousand four hundred twelve dollars. Hell so yes! Thank y'all for that. Thank y'all for that. And Justin finished with fifty three hundred. So you got him by one twelve. You got mm. him by one twelve. Tough. So Jeez. thank y'all for those and those that supported Jordy at Phil. And we all had JVH one twelve. It went great. It went Good. Fantastic. Good. Uh, shout out to Anthony Piazza, the entire team at Phil's. Yes. Uh, they were, in fact, the the donation that pushed us past JV. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Shout out to uh, Phil. Really and truly. <laughs> our lunch, Dr. Artie Brown and Kendra. Kendra. Yes. Yeah, Kendra I- did that. Their she idea. That. She put it. Their idea. She put that together. My girl that. Cassie. Yeah. <laughs> she, they put it together. And, I mean, that was, that was what pushed us over the top. It did. And so... You weren't there, so Jordy wasn't there for the gala, but oh, that's okay. Like, he Sorry. supported along the way. He promoted it um, on his show. So, this is just like a little token. Thank Y'all were the God. key. Look how cute this is. A little key. Key uh, to our success. So, that's like a little you. thank you in there. You were kind of supposed to get it the night of. It was kind of like a... Um, it was a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> But that's a shirt, so you can wear your shirt proudly. Okay. Yeah. Don't we got your medium that. size Ooh, for you. Yeah. Jordy likes a more fitted look, guys. Yeah, he likes yeah. a more fitted look. Yeah, right. So we got him a medium um, oh, in that shirt. Snug. And also, wow. you get a plaque that you Come can on. display. If you if you have room, I don't know if he has room for it or not. Um, oh, but look, oh, at that. Cool. look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. So Looks nice. like you won a golf tournament. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like one thank. open. <laughs> Cassandra. <laughs> and my team. <laughs> no, or you can do the Snoop one. You can do the Snoop one. I want to thank me, me? Yeah, for right. being me. <laughs> <laughs> However you want to accept it, you can accept no, really it. No, really and truly, I want to thank everybody who donated yeah, to the no. Fest. Yeah. And uh, really and truly... Um, Dr. Artie Brown for helping me out, really. I mean, it wasn't until you came on the show and started promoting it that we really didn't start to see the push of the donations. So um, tell us how your podcast is going, Conscious Moms. It is. It's going. So we had to, like, in the yeah. spirit of being moms and, like, spring break and Flower other festing. things, like, me and the other hosts, like, there have just been, you know, like, personal things in, in other people's lives and transitioning for Allison from college to like real life. Um, so we took like kind of like a two week kind of break, but going to be back um, next week and just going to do it weekly. So I know for sure I'll be there um, as they can join. They will, or we're going to have like other people on to talk about stuff. And you know, one thing, one of my things that I'm going to talk about for women, but what's crazy is you men are starting to get like cosmetic things done. <laughs> you know about Brotox? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything yeah, because I don't I do, do it, but yeah, do. Do you, you do Botox? I've done it twice. Really? Yep. Shout really? out to my dentist. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. And how, how do you like it? Like, how I does love it, it, you love? <laughs> I mean, you know. When I, did you start? Within a year. Okay. I've done it twice within a year. They, they He told me to do it at like six months. Okay, every so six months. Where probably do you get it? Can you show year, us get, where you get where it? Go. Yeah, you, where you, go? It, like where you, you did it like what ultimately would he the call it? Like feet. Feet. Yeah, yeah. And okay. Then he put it like kind of like right here. Okay. You know, like under my eye yeah. and kind of like on the curve right here. Do we have any before and after pictures of Jordy? With the, with I the mean, you could probably go back to the show. Okay, and you know see, it mean? Like, see it before. But there wasn't like a headshot of a before or after. Got it. it. But I definitely noticed it. Really? Like the difference of it. So what made you do it? Um, the before. <laughs> what made you do it? Like what made you say, hey, I might think I might do Botox? Well, I started to see my crow's feet <laughs> in pictures mm-hmm. of 
more or less it was from like squinting. Like I was seeing. You can't see. Yeah. Man's blind. <laughs> Losing Doesn't vision, have glasses though. Which is, you know, like. So a, you don't. Let's part talk of about that. <laughs> Wait, didn't we say we we're going to work on a, a sponsor for eyesight? Yes. And <laughs> I've talked to Dr. Ann Shaw at the Southern Eye Center and. Perfect. Southern Eye Center, can we please get Jordy some uh, help for his Making vision? Making another please? video, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why haven't you gotten another visit before? You right. don't like the look? Got a new phone, too. Uh, like, no, I've never needed them. <laughs> never I mean, needed them. Doc, I've been 2020 up to this point. I mean, mm. and a firm 2020. <laughs> I mean, like, very confident on my 2020, <laughs> but now as it slips, okay. I mean, I am taking on water. I'm losing ground by the day. <laughs> So we need to get them uh, on appointment. You know, I mean, I can still read Spieth 18th par four. Okay. Plus okay. seven first round on All top right. of it. Okay. Yeah. But you find yourself. Uh, you know, like his, his logo right now looks a little blurry to me. Got it. And yeah, that's AT&T uh, right th there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's fair. So we're going to go get, we're going to go get our eyes checked at Southern Eye Center. Yep. And then um, Botox. So when are you due for more Botox? I'd probably be up. <laughs> probably I, I, be up. I would probably be up. Okay. I like how confident you are too. You're like, yeah, I do Botox. No, so I've been seeing like on Instagram, like men getting like Say it. Up. Say it. No, it I mean, well, they've getting they're getting hair like uh, transplants. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm they're just... getting like the Botox. They're getting you know like they're mm -hmm. they're taking care of themselves. Well, I mean, so. the, the fact of the matter is, is that you can do just about anything <clears throat> you want to yourself now. It's scary. It really is. It's scary. It really A is. little scary. It's too. It's it's too much. Yeah, it is. And then it's like once you start, mm. Mm -hmm. do we open up a Pandora's box? Like, where do you stop? You know what I mean? Because I feel like you look at yourself, you look at yourself, and you're like, I could well, what about this? this? What about this? And, you know, like. Then mm. you wake up six months later, and you have abs and in, in place right. in your stomach, and you're like, these aren't even mine. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not great. even a real person. <laughs> yeah. These I are mean, Botox. So, yeah. Like, I've, I've even considered, like you said, Botox, but I've been like. I don't know. I've been like so you've scared. Never done anything? I've never done anything. I've never done anything. Like I'm scared. Like I've, I see people who've had it and like maybe have like a droopy eye after. Like I'm always uh -huh. like scared yeah, of I? like, and I'm like, and then I'm like already before it was fine. Like just leave it alone. Yeah, you know. Right. Once so, you start tampering, yeah. then you're like, oh, I gotta go back and now I need to fix this too. Exactly. Forty thousand in debt and lose <laughs> your wife and your kids. Like, oh wow! You do all. Oh wow! <laughs> I got a dentist surgery. Know, I didn't know that now, happened. Now I'm a drunk. <laughs> yeah. Got my, knee, got my knees. Got my extended. I mean, that's a lot. So, are you having to use? I'm six so, five now. And I think I think it's I think it would be fun if we had somebody like kind of talk about it because like there are some myths. So like for me, like does it take more and more Botox to get the effect? Like, do you keep, like, just piling on? Yeah. Like, does it take more and more each time? Do you find that, like, when you're done getting it, do you feel like your skin is droopier or saggier than it was I before? I haven't done it enough to speak on it. Like Got that. it. Got you know it. I, mean? I would okay. probably have to yeah. have, like, a... So, I have, like, all these questions, and I'm just like... Oh, you need to bring a doctor in. I know. That's what I'm saying. We need to bring somebody in and be like, hey, talk to us about it, because I, I don't know. And some things are myths, and people just make them up. And then some things are like legit. So like that one guy, let's talk about vasectomies, right? Where he mm -hmm. was like, oh, the research shows. So I went after he said that. I forget what his name was. But he was like, oh, the research shows that vasectomies aren't good for men. Like I found none of that research. So I think would he be made the, that what up. What would be the drawback? Mm -hmm. be Testosterone, the... I guess, if there's one thing that you would but try. But when I looked it up, there were right. no, like when I looked it up, the only things were like pain, mm -hmm. which, oh, okay. Surgery. You know, you're going to have Slip that. me on Tuesdays of Master's Week, and I'll yeah. be all right. Right. You know what I mean? Cold so, peas and a... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a cold one. Yeah, right. <laughs> might, might, might hurt the cough, though. I, well, what? imagine all those people that were getting... As long as Tiger's making a run, I'll be all right. Yeah, there's a bunch of people that are getting a vasectomy during the earthquake in New York. Ooh. Had to be at least one person. <laughs> oh my got <gosh>. nicked. <laughs> you got nicked. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, but honestly, like, seriously, <laughs> like, the complications or, like, the after effects afterwards are really minimal, um, like really nothing. Like, like I said, they're like swelling. 
some pain, but that's expected if you just have like a little procedure. But y'all, it, it literally is like a 15 minute procedure. You don't even have to. Why did you? Why did you look away uh, when look, I said I, that? Why? Sure, See, that's sure, what he's talking about. Like, he's, I'm 27, he's, so I think it's, it's, it's I mean, not. He's, this he's is not, not an aroma possibility. Right? No, what? that's but fine. But he definitely looked away when uh, I said is, that. Like, oh, he sign definitely me up. looked away. No, I mean, I, there, there is, you're an outlier. Yeah, oh, you are. You know what I mean? But like she's, in, she's, in the demographic of 25 to 40. I mean, I just say here's here's my thing. So for a woman, for a like woman, 45. we carry a baby, huh? we like give after birth. Forty five, like yeah. you're saying, never say never. Like what you no, know? I'm saying that there is a day and time, but not for a twenty. No, no, no. I'm just saying man. though, like when the time presents itself, men drag their feet so much to get it done. Well, sure, Doc. But y'all, I mean, am I signing up to get snipped? On so what do you think? Let's I talk think about it. Yeah. What do y'all think? Like what? It, what? It, what's the issue? I think what's the issue? What are you? What are visual. you scared of? Yeah. The, the visual. I think it's you don't surgery have to look. Yeah. You're, you're not don't have looking. To look. You're not looking. But you're asking me what the fear is. Okay, so what? Is it's just the fear the visual of somebody of, sawing in? Nobody is sawing. Have you ever seen? There's something about Mary <laughs> burning. <laughs> okay, yes, I have. A long Men are terrified of zippers. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, y'all they numb it they numb the area doc, look, okay i'm not debating you on pain and you guys deal with a lot more than we do the yeah. pregnancy thing puts you in a totally different Category. stratosphere than i, mean, I can ever i don't complain we to put her. on 30 to I 60 don't talk about complaints. here's another I, thing let me get this off when my it plate. comes to burning and in doing something <laughs> Into that area, I don't need. I don't need your y'all. But <laughs> like, we, as much as I value your your <laughs> stance and debates, it's a master debater. No, I just no. I just I just want to say, like, I just think it's only. I think it's only fair, right? Because we carry a baby for nine months. We put on you 30 win. to 60, if not more, sometimes. You okay? win. Meanwhile, y'all are in the gym getting swole while we're getting bigger. That's what it really okay? comes down to. That's we, what it yeah. comes down to. We really to. get it. Yeah. Is <laughs> that we still got a little curve and y'all got... Y'all don't. You get a little this bad. This is our curve right here. Right. Yeah. So we get it. I get it. You know, it. and then, it. And then we have to birth the child. Okay? You win. You win. So... I'm debating this. Okay. So, and it is, like, for some women, it is, like, 24 hours of labor. Like, mm -hmm. for some, you might get lucky and it'd be an hour or two. Yep. For yep. others, it, it could right literally be all day. Yep. And for you guys to be like, oh, I don't know if I could do 15 minutes. Here's... Well, no, no, no. Here, here's the deal. You are a gladiator compared to me. You are so much tougher than I am. I'm not debating the male female species toughness. Yeah, no. Y'all win. But yeah, when yeah, I'm yeah. getting a vasectomy, I don't need your opinion on it. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> it's going to hurt. I'm in pain. What? I'm fearful of it. The reason why I'm not doing it is because it's described to me as numbing, laser, cutting, my God. stopping my flow. If you, talk, I mean, if you talk to a man that's had that, one. I'm out. If you've talked to a man that's had one, though, he's like, oh, man, I'm so glad I got it. I'm, busting I'm not everywhere. even going to lie. He is so happy that he got I it. I know this. He is. I have spoken he, to men exactly on the other side. On the other side. And they have talked about the journey. <laughs> I am shooting that club. So, <laughs> but, you know, like, I I mean, I'm just saying, like, I, I, haven't, I haven't met somebody that's gotten one that regrets it. I, me either. So and I, and there you go and there you have it and there you have it. Drop Mike, I'm out. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. We're on the same team. We're just going about it just a different play. way. Yeah, yeah. You know you're, know just like like, you're just playing like the I promise. I promise I'm going to meet you there. It just has to be on my own terms. <laughs> I, <I'm> a, <laughs> like, I have a friend my age that wants to get a sec me. Get him. And I, I respect it. I guess you but, would but check just. Should you check your sperm count first? Because what if you're already firing blanks and you get a vasectomy for no reason? Like, <laughs> damn. 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 But damn. what if it decides to start firing? I mean, but I will say this before we go. You do, even though you get it done, you are not out of the woods. You have to get, you have to Raincoat, send in a sample like, and make sure that you are Pit stop. sterile. <laughs> like, make sure you have to send it in. It. <laughs> make sure, make sure you're sterile, and then you're released. That's so gotta, like, don't that's forget that part. That's gotta be a hell of a phone call. Yeah.
Like, hey, but you mail uh, it in. I'm no, I, you bring it in. I'm late. Send like, a no, and it, and it has a shelf life, so you <laughs> no, have to send it, it in. Like, 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 like within a certain period of time. Do I have time, to like, not. refrigerate? They give you a container. Hell yeah. Okay. Oh, however, however you collect <laughs> so your wait. sample is how you collect your sample. Oh, you so you and you. Mail? <laughs> So all right, <laughs> thank you guys. I enjoyed so, today. So mail it back. I'll be so back you, next Friday. So mail Maybe we'll have a professional next time to <laughs> give y'all a little more detail. To about talk it. about my sample. I'm out. Yeah, yeah, to I'm talk out. Uh, Wait, are you talking about this? Yeah. I got it. They got a Playboy from 97. Uh, hit good. that like, share, and comment. Yeah. <laughs> have a good weekend. <laughs>